Okay. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you, Lord, for the uh, for your eternal word, Lord, for the wisdom that is packed uh, in every single word, Lord, in the scriptures. <clears throat> Father, we, we, we acknowledge, Lord, that it is life-giving. We acknowledge, God, that it is, uh, God, uh, transforming, Lord, your word, completely changing, God, edifying us. So, Lord, we thank you for the wisdom. We thank you for the life-giving instructions. Lord, we thank you that your life um, is power. <clears throat> and as you have instructed, God, Lord, we thank you for these things that we need, Lord, to have in our lives, Master, that we would dwell with understanding, God, that we would, <clears throat> Lord, that there will be love and honor and being tenderhearted, being courteous, Lord, not um, vengeful in any way, God. Father God, we pray. I just pray especially for those who are married, and I just pray that this will be, Lord, uh, uh, found in our lives, in each one of our hearts and lives, God, that uh, uh, this will be ours, Master, that even as we treasure your words, even as we love your word to, Lord, uh, Lord take root in our hearts, Master. I pray that this will be our portion. And I just pray for those who are, those who are preparing uh, for uh, for marriage that's ahead. And I pray, Father God, that uh, this will be something that will be Lord, strongly built in, God, um, in the mind and in the heart. We just want to thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory at this time. In Jesus' master's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's, uh, let's get started. Um, we last class we were looking at um, you know the whole aspect of communication, which is uh, chapter six, right? Chapter six in our notes, communication and how uh, communication being uh, the building block of marriage uh, being very important, um, and how um, you know communication comes under attack, right? Uh, and uh, when it breaks down. The marriage is not as strong as it should be, okay. And a lot of problems creep in uh, because of um, the breakdown of communication. And we also saw, you know, what are the things that actually <clears throat> promote this breakdown and bring about this breakdown. And uh, uh, just a quick review of that, you know, what causes uh, communication breakdown? Well, uh, a, a major part of it is fear, okay. Fear that we will be judged, fear that we will be criticized, fear that uh, what we say will be used against us, and the future will be we will be made fun of, we will be ridiculed. So fear um, and fear of being misunderstood. If I say this, you know, it will not be understood the same way I say it. So again, fear, um, <clears throat> and because of fear. Maybe, uh, maybe because of uh, you know certain bad experiences, um, there is a suppression, right? Um, there could be suppression of um, suppression, meaning you know, you're not really being fully expressive, but you you're putting you know it's suppressing all things, you know, putting a cap, putting a lid on emotions, putting a lid on what the what our true feelings are, and uh, and basically <clears throat> putting on uh, another front. Right, another face, um, whereas the true person or the true expression or the true feeling, it's all uh, you know hidden deep within. You know, that doesn't come up front. So basically, just living a <clears throat> excuse me, living a, a dual life. So what is actually communicated, what is actually said, what is emoted is something else. And uh, the true feelings are actually kept suppressed. So when that happens over a period of time, um, you know, the first thing that comes under, even during that, um, you know, uh, very rapidly, you know, the first thing that comes, um, uh, that becomes a problem is uh, the the whole issue of closeness. You know, when one doesn't feel close to the person, one feels very <clears throat> detached, distanced. And so, because it's always a, uh, the true feelings are not expressed, right? It's um, it's it's only uh, you know it's just uh, something that is artificial, something that's really superficial, right? So we see <clears throat> all these outcomes, all these negative outcomes, 
which come in the relationship because of uh, communication right um, the other things could be um, you know causing the breakdown of communication could be just disinterest uh, not interested in the other person not interested in what they have to say uh, being um, uh, not, not attentive and uh, and constantly being preoccupied or thinking about something else, maybe thinking about work. Uh, these are legitimate things, you know, maybe work, maybe there's, there are challenges, but if it's going to be, if you're going to make it a habit to uh, constantly being preoccupied and, uh, and not really being able to have a heart to heart communication, heart to heart talk, then that's going to affect the marriage, right? So, <clears throat> so we looked at some of the remedies and, and how um, our words have power therefore we need to use our words to bless um, and that is in line with what we read just now you know it says that uh, do not return evil for evil or reviling for reviling right so so bless uh, even if there is some negative um, thing that is said you know bless the other bless your spouse and uh, you know that uh, that will bring about change right that will bring about change in our own attitudes um, attitude and our own temperament, uh, our mood shifts as we bless the other person. Uh, the intensity of, uh, you know, uh, anger or uh, anything that we had against the person just goes down and disappears, right? Even as we choose to bless the other person. Okay, so today <clears throat> we're going to look at um, another important aspect, but uh, a very practical uh, aspect, uh, which is managing the home. Okay, uh, managing the home, managing the place where we stay, uh, and uh, well, not just the physical place, but also what happens uh, when when uh, two people are married and are living in the say under the same roof. There are a whole lot of things that um, need to be taken care of. Right, there there are things that uh, bills to be paid. There are things to be um, done uh in in the house outside of the house to keep the household running right and uh maybe we we would have given it thought when we were single but definitely you know when you're married uh, even before you get married it's better to uh, to uh, think about these things and also get some skills learn some skills get some skills on um how what can i do to you know uh, effectively manage the home right um let me share uh, the screen this okay, just a minute please okay right Okay, yeah, so we're talking about uh, managing the home. Okay, now um, when we look at Proverbs 24, and if you could turn there, uh, Proverbs 20, 24, and then uh, verses 3 and 4. Um, just give me a minute. Sorry. Okay, Proverbs 24, verse 3. Um, Through wisdom, a house is built, and by knowledge, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Um, verse 6. For by wise counsel, you will wage your own war, and in a multitude of counselors there is safety okay so uh, let's just read it in the good news um, version homes are built on the foundation of wisdom and understanding um, one second okay homes are built on the foundation of wisdom and understanding and where there is knowledge, the rooms are furnished with valuable, beautiful things. Above all, verse 6, above all, you must make careful plans before you fight a battle. And 
the more good advice you get, the more likely you are to win. Okay. So what we're going to look at uh, today is some, some practical information. It is something that is commonly available, um, but maybe we don't really think about it and maybe we don't discuss it. You know, maybe one doesn't discuss with a spouse um, these things, you know. Maybe you think that okay, it's 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 it ought to be you know the other person needs to have that understanding, uh, but it's uh, like many other things you know uh, we cannot assume this, we cannot assume that it will just happen. We cannot assume that well the per the other person will understand perfectly. No, it is good to uh, talk about it. It is good to discuss it, right? So the, one of the first things that um, you know is to is to see. Uh, is to talk about is um, after marriage, you know, uh, is the couple going to be the, the husband and wife? I, you know, as husband and wife, are you going to be staying independently? Um, you know, that's something that you need to agree on. Independently meaning, are you going to be uh, starting off uh, with your on your own home? You know, in many cultures, in many uh, places, that happens, uh, where uh, the you know you're not staying with your parents, but you're staying separately, independently. You're setting up a household, and uh, uh, you know running your house and so on. So uh, the Bible also talks about uh, you know, Genesis two twenty four, and this is the reason for which a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, united to his wife. So there is a leaving that happens, you know, there is a separation that happens, um, and there is a cleaving or a joining that happens, right? So um, so this is, uh, we, we see that in scripture, and we see that, uh, well, in, in many cultures, uh, you know, this is, this is a normal thing. Um, but, uh, and, and, it, and it, it, will, it is really helpful, because uh, you're staying separately, you're staying on your own, and uh, all the decisions, uh, you know, about your life, about certain choices, things that, uh, everything that you need to do and make is, uh, you know, just both of you are there to decide about it. And also, you can focus on, on building your marriage. You know, there could be conflicts, there could be things that need to be resolved, there could be decisions, day-to-day uh, -day decisions um, that need to be made, and, and just the two, the husband and the wife, are involved in making those choices, making those decisions. Right? So um, it is good to do that, you know, to strengthen the marriage, to build, to work through certain things uh, that need to be done, and to learn certain skills as well. You know. Now, uh, that may not always be the case, right? Uh, you know, starting a household and uh, living separately as husband and wife. Uh, that may not always be ideally. That is uh, that is what you know what is recommended for a, uh, at least in the early years of marriage. That is what is recommended. But then that may not be the case. Uh, for example, maybe uh, uh, you choose to live with your parents you know for whatever reason maybe they are maybe they are old um, and need need to be taken care of maybe um, you know one of them is no more passed away maybe the father's not there or mother's not there and they're alone and uh, they are you know, getting on in age elderly and they need to be taken care of or they could be um, you know a, a, a situation where uh, maybe they are unwell maybe they are yeah, um, you know, they have, um, they are sick, unwell, weak, uh, and they even the day-to-day -day things needed to be taken care of. So, uh, well, they they cannot stay on their own. So, well, the husband and wife decide to, you know, stay together. That could be the case. Or maybe there's a, another family member. Maybe it's not. Um, uh, maybe uh, it's not just the father or the mother, but it could be a brother or a sister or someone who who needs to stay for a you know for a for a season, right? Maybe they're studying somewhere and they're you know uh, in the city where you are, and they or maybe they are young and they um, uh, and they need some help, or, or you know it could be uh, various things. Um, so this uh, this could be the scenario, right? So in but one needs to be prepared. The the man and the woman, the husband and the wife, they need to be mentally prepared um, for such things, right? 
which means that even before the wedding, even before uh, the, as part of the uh, marriage preparation, even before the wedding, it to, before it comes to that, um, it's good if both of them talk about these things, right? Uh, and say, okay, this is uh, um, this is how it is. Uh, this is a scenario. So, what do you think? Right? Can, we need to do this. We need to take care of you know my parent uh, my parents or um, my father or my mother or this and so both talk about it and come to an understanding and if there is uh, a problem in coming to a, an agreement then it is better that at least for some time till they come to an agreement that something some other uh, you know some other uh, thing is worked out right so um, there could be problems uh, a lot of complications which could arise because of this, right? For example, um, you know, if the parents are staying on, um, and if they begin to, uh, you know, interfere in the decisions made by the husband and the wife, right? So now it uh, the thing is that it all starts from a heart of sincerity, right? You know, as parents, maybe they are very sincere and they don't want uh, the children to, you know, uh, make some poor choices or wrong choices. But, um, but they are so interfering, right, uh, with every decision. Okay, hey, you guys need to uh, do this. You need to buy this. You should not buy this. You should not be spending like this. Or, uh, you know, on a, on a day-to-day -day thing, uh, maybe you guys should eat this and not eat that. And uh, all those things, right? Um, maybe even the time schedule, you know, uh, 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 you know, getting up early, going to bed on time, or things like that. The, the schedule, and uh, and let's say if you know over a period of time, and then children are there on the scene. So uh, also, you know, this is how it should the children should be brought up. Uh, this is how. This is what they should eat. This is what they should not eat. Uh, this is what they should wear, and and uh, you know things like that. So if there's constant interference, right, from uh, or constant pressure, parental pressure, then that's going to uh, definitely influence and affect the marriage. You know, it goes without saying. It cannot be unless there is an understanding between the husband and the wife and a very strong commitment and agreement saying uh, hey uh, if this happens right then this is how we are going to respond honorably this is how we're going to respond and this is how we're going to you know deal with it uh, because you know we can't help it that uh, we need to take care they need to stay with us uh, um, or, or maybe it could be a situation where uh, you know with the husband and the wife uh, for a season for some time they do not they're not doing well financially. Okay, maybe one of them has a job, and they're in, in a in a city where there's a high cost of living, and uh, you know they cannot afford to stay on their own and uh, maybe pay the rents and all that. So they are staying with either of their parents, um, and you know housing and all that is taken care of for a season, right? Till they get uh, a little better financially, the, the situation changes, and then they're able to do well. Okay, so um, so the thing is this: to um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, otherwise it, it could also be because of relocation, right? Maybe the husband has to go to a uh, different place, or a wife has to go to a different uh, city or a town uh, because of the job, or there's a job transfer, and uh, they just need to go there and set up things, set up house, and then uh, and then move the family. So, so the thing is that time period, you know, till that time. Uh, everything gets sorted uh, they need to stay let's say with the extended family so or the immediate family so this needs to be discussed okay so this needs to be discussed this needs to be um, an ag agreed upon so that things are smooth because it will put pressure on the uh, on the marriage okay so the next thing is uh, when it comes to uh, daily schedules when it comes to weekly schedules so what do we mean by that you know uh, in in today's um, in today's world in today's uh, scenario, um, both the man and the wife, you know, the husband and the wife, they are they could be working professionals. You know, they're working nine to five and probably even longer hours. You know, just not just not eight hours, but 
maybe 10 hours, 12 hours, right? Um, and maybe it's an early uh, part of their career, uh, earlier on in their career. So they're putting in a lot of work and a lot of uh, work, uh, you know, uh, hours professionally. So the thing is that um, uh, they need to plan uh, their time together. You know, like we were saying, you know, uh, communication you know, or uh, takes time. It takes trust. It involves transparency. Right? So they need to be intentional and make time for one another. So as husband and wife, if they are, you know, if they do not do that, then it's going to negatively impact. However, if they, you know, despite their busy uh, schedules and daily schedules and weekly schedules, despite their busyness, if they actually allot some time and they get intentional about uh, uh, about their communication, spending time with each other, then uh, things will change. Like um, uh, I, I remember mentioning, right? There was a scenario where um, um, situation where the, the husband was working night shifts and the wife was working day shifts, and um, you know it was virtually impossible for them to actually meet and spend time and talk to each other because one would be tired, the other would be ready to go to work, um, the other is coming back and you know this one's going to work. And so it was very, very extremely difficult season for them. Um, so they had to you know manage that and come to a place saying that uh, maybe we need a change. you know there's need there needs to be a change in you know uh, career and and they realized that. They need to be a change in a change in the work, uh, not in career. Sorry, change in the work uh, environment. Maybe look for another job, uh, which which allows a you know day kind of shift. So something had to be done. Okay, and uh, they actually did that. So so things like that. So so sometimes it could even be um, well, uh, you know, it, it it could be a scenario where well the husband is living elsewhere, a uh, different town, sometimes a different country, and time just goes by, you know, um, months go by, years go by, and they're just doing that uh, basically to survive. Right? There, needs to be, um, there needs to be money sent to the house, kids' education. Um, well, uh, the, the bills need to be paid. Everyday livelihood, everything, you know, um, and for that sake, um, you know, some families literally sacrifice their marriage. You know, now, now that's a hard decision. You know, it's a hard decision. It's a difficult decision. It's a difficult choice. You know, and many homes do that. And uh, but the thing is, it comes at, or it comes with a price. Right, it comes with a price um, because there there are repercussions. Okay, there are repercussions for the family, like the, the marriage, uh, parenting, everything. You know, I've heard like in my in my own uh, family, uh, you know, the the people who did that and uh, and the children, you know, after they grew up, they um, they felt very distanced, very uh, uh, disconnected. Right, from from the father, because the father was this, and they just felt that the father was like a Santa Claus, you know, coming, um, you know, uh, during vacation, giving them gifts because he was feeling very guilty that he was away from the home, so he would bring some good stuff, but uh, but he was not there, you know, in the daily course of life. Right? So. Um, uh, uh, it had its repercussions. So the thing is, the family needs to, um, you know, needs to decide. Now, these are these are. There's no easy answers. So if it's for a season, you know, uh, as a church and as a counseling ministry, uh, what we normally recommend is, uh, you know, three to six months. You know, if it's a relocation, if it is a, you know, something that uh, that cannot be avoided, right? Um, three to six months. And then we say work towards, in that, in that three to six months also, work towards moving the family so that the family can stay together and and uh, and then basically do life together. Okay, so uh, it's a very important uh, decision. And while the the cultural thing, culturally, it might be okay. 
right so hey that's that's a done thing well the the father you know stays somewhere and uh, and maybe the wife is uh, somewhere uh, and uh, working making money to keep things going it's it's a done thing you know culturally that's a norm it's a done thing it's okay uh, you know everyone is doing that uh, while that that could be the norm but then you know as a as a family you know as a husband and wife you need to decide you know is that risk worth taking because there is a price to be paid you know there is um, the, the emotional distance that creeps in there are other problems when with parenting that happen so uh, it is not uh, it is not a price that you need to pay for the sake of keeping things going okay um so uh, so that requires um, some thinking some discussion praying uh, asking for god's leading wisdom and intervention at times saying god we need your favor uh, uh, we cannot go on like this uh, we need a, we need your favor and uh, so that you know we can as a family we can stay together and you know um, and and yeah move on okay so um, well uh, so daily things uh, weekly things schedules and everything talk about it okay uh, what are our work timings how do we adjust this how do we things you know that and uh, with that to say that there are a lot of things which happen in the household right there's cooking to be done people to be fed there's cleaning there's cleaning of the house cleaning of clothes laundry and, uh, bills to be paid shopping etc so so the thing is this you know in a busy world in a busy working environment whether it's ministry or whether it's uh, you know uh, otherwise uh, where both husband and wife they are busy you know that's one scenario right? where both are working professionals they are uh, they are morning till night they are busy they are working and they come back and well it is uh, in a, in a traditional setting you know in a cultural thing it could be that the, the wife takes care of the cooking and the things in the household and now that cannot happen right in this situation where both are working both are working professionals both are spending time equal time or sometimes more than someone is spending more time than the other outside in the workplace so when they come back home uh, well the man of the house cannot expect the the lady of the house to take care of uh, the household chores and everything so it's uh, it's a partnership right so both have to take on that load equally and say okay uh, i'll do this and you do that right uh, this comes you, this is where your strengths are so you do this and then you know you took you take care of the cooking i'll take care of the cleaning or you take care of this i'll take care of that so there needs to be a a, a plan there needs to be uh, understanding uh, so um well the the family might say or the culturally might say what is this the the, the man is cooking the house you know how how is that even why why should it, why should the man do that um you know maybe there are jo some jokes at family gatherings oh he does all the cooking and he's the, you know she's the boss of the house and all that because of the you know uh, responsibilities they shoulder and the home but uh, not a problem you know because it's uh, it is this situation Uh, where both are working professionally and spending time in the workplace and they need to equally carry the load even otherwise you know even otherwise uh, to to be a partnership to be a team uh, to take care of things in the home um, when there are children there are additional responsibilities caring for children maybe there are you know caring for some some other members of the family all those things right so working together as a team and making sure that the responsibilities are carried out um, if there is an understanding you know then things are smooth otherwise there are constant fights you know why you know why are you not doing this right um like for example uh, in our home you know i i'm very bad at cooking or you know my cooking skills are very negligible so it uh, what i can clean right i can i can wash i can clean so very early on i said okay this is how it is you know you do the cooking i'll do the cleaning i can take care of that also my energy levels are you know uh, they are okay you know especially uh, you know when it's cooking and when you do this thing and some and stuff needs to be put out 
you know, are put out um, and uh, um, before the meal, and stuff needs to be put back. Certain things that need to be, you know, put away after the meal, and I and I'm I'm fine with it. I'm okay with that. Right, um, I'm okay with uh, putting away stuff after the meal. My energy levels are are fine. I can, I can, I'm I'm okay with that. So, we just came to a you know early on an uh, an understanding very early on in life, saying okay, um, I'm fine. I can put away. I have the strength. I can I can wash. I can clean. I can do that. But uh, you know, kitchen is very unfamiliar territory for me. Otherwise, cooking is unfamiliar territory. So it's, it's best that you handle it. So. So that's working perfectly for us. For some, maybe it's something, someone, something else, right? Uh, like I have a relative who's a chef, so he's he's very good, uh, you know, he's cooking and everything, and and the wife um, doesn't cook, but she does the, all the other things, organizing stuff, and so, you know, when it comes to cooking, he's the he's the man, uh, and uh, he's he's very good at it. Everybody enjoys the cooking. Everybody enjoys the meal. So he's very creative and makes things interesting. Wow works right so things like that so uh, it might go against the, the tradition or a, a popular culture but it's fine you know you know that it's a team you know that it's teamwork okay okay um another thing that we can oops okay um just, yeah okay when it comes to um you know, especially when it comes to um, you know the times we live in, um, there are a lot of things. You know, uh, I remember uh, there was a time when we didn't have. Uh, you know, there was. Uh, I was growing up. We didn't have a television, and then the television came in, and uh, and virtually conversation around the dinner table or, or during meal time just came to zero. Okay, when where we used to, uh, I'm talking about my my school days growing up. And where we used to talk about, okay, what happened during the day and how's everyone's day, uh, all that came to nothing because we were just so glued on to the screen and then just eating. We don't even care what we're eating. We just, you know, we, uh, so it, it became like that. And then, so, uh, so when we got married, we decided that we won't have a, you know, a TV at home, right? And, and definitely we will not have, uh, you know anything on during a meal time okay so uh, at our home the rule is no phones at the table uh, you know uh, and no uh, of course we don't no programs but we, we do have a you know a, a television screen but no cable uh, but we do have internet broadband so we, we pick and choose what we want to watch and we watch so uh, very rarely like if there is a, maybe there's a you know a tennis match or a cricket match or something like that happening and then and then we have a meal around that but otherwise um we'd like to talk you know during a during a meal time just catch up uh with each other uh, and what uh, how the day was because uh dinner's the only meal we have together because otherwise you know breakfast we're just rushing and uh, you know college and work and everything and so um so uh, the family also needs to have some kind of uh, agreement or uh, understanding about screen time, right? whether it's phone, whether it's uh, television, whether it's social social media, um, have some kind of a thing saying that, okay, um, you know, because sometimes, and especially during this pandemic and everything, the lines blur, right? You're working from home and still there could be people working from home. So there is no work time and uh, home time. People finish work. Uh, there are some late night calls to be made, so uh, everything blurs. So you just continue to work, continue to work, and uh, you know it, it interferes with the time with the family. So there needs to be some set time. Yeah, there are emergencies. There are some specialized you know things that happen, uh, and uh, that comes with the understanding. Saying okay, I, there is a call we need to take. There is a meeting, uh, and it could be outside of work hours and but uh, you know it, it is with the understanding that you know we'll do this and uh, that you take on only that so much so that it, it doesn't interfere with what's happening with the family you know if there's a family occasion and something needs to be you know celebration or you know uh, something else then of course you defer that you know, defer the work thing uh, or work call 
or uh, you know deferral checking the social media you know or checking the phone answering phone calls you know sometimes at the uh, at the at a meal time the call comes and then you know it could be just a, a, a not a very important call uh, it could be taken later or it could be answered later but then you need to have that understanding okay um, and talk about that right because uh, it's very important uh, because uh, if that understanding is not there then it be, these, these become a constant irritation a uh, constant source of uh, frustration even for other family members so they would say like okay you know the father is always doing that the wife is always doing that you know why can't they take the call later so it becomes a, a point of contention right so that is also something that needs to be um, uh, clarified okay um, before we go further okay let's look at family recreation also um, the other thing is also to plan um, for time together okay uh, like we said you know, plan for uh, time together to intentionally talk to one another plan for recreation okay now what happens is some uh, in 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 most i would say ministry homes right if it's a pastor home or a, you know somebody who's in ministry now there's recreation taking time off uh, to spend time uh, with one another or a vacation um, sometimes it's considered as a taboo in the sense that it's uh, hey, uh, you know you should be ministering you should be taking care of people it's you know almost feel guilty for doing that right uh, taking time off and spending time with the family or some fun time with the family you know, it's almost uh, it's like a, uh, it's like considered a you know a taboo whereas it is not Right. God is the one who instituted family. God is the one who designed family. And for the family to thrive and function well, well, uh, you need to spend time. Right. So uh, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing, um, you know, uh, unbiblical about spending time with family, taking time off uh, to just spend time, uh, have a fun time together, travel somewhere if it's possible. Uh, Maybe just you know go somewhere where you which you can uh, you know some place where you can afford and spend time together. Absolutely nothing wrong, right? So uh, family recreation, uh, maybe family vacation. Okay, so uh, well each family does things differently for and for each individual, you know there are different things that really work. You know, some people like to maybe eat out for them that's fun and uh, a certain kind of food that's fun uh, i mean that they like uh, there are certain things that they like doing some people want to go maybe just window shopping uh, you know go to a mall uh, maybe they want to visit others right uh, that makes them happy they they enjoy doing it and for some people it's like i don't want to go out at all i just want to stay at home maybe do some gardening and do the you know for some people it's like that so uh, whatever works you know uh, uh, for the family, for the family member. Um, and uh, well, there could be a case where, you know, one person is very, you know, outdoor, they just enjoy time outdoors, but the other person is basically, they just want to be indoors, you know. They, so then you have a, you have a problem there, you have a challenge there, right? So, um, so there needs to be give and take saying, okay, let's, let's spend some time outdoors. Uh, let's do this and uh, maybe the, the the other person who's not a very outdoors person can actually learn something uh enjoy it as well uh and uh well the other times you could be indoors you could uh, think of things so there is there is some amount of sacrifice there's some amount of give and take in that right knowing fully well that the other person enjoys it and uh, you want to be able to provide you know, uh, facilitate that enjoyment, facilitate that time together. So, um, so that is that is really good. So it could be shopping, it could be going to a park, it could be some outdoor activities. Um, and what are some things that uh, new things that you want to look at? You know, new activities that you want to uh, explore together. Uh, you know, do do this together. I, I remember once we it was very 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 early on in Bangalore, and uh, when our daughter was. Uh, I think she was probably I don't know eight eight years nine years old and 
maybe younger then we went to this mall and then there was this house of horror you know you uh, all these scary things uh, inside and then uh, and we all said hey let's go let's we've never been to one so we said let's go let's go and then we went and uh, oh wow it was uh, you know it was for me it was funny because these things keep popping and then but then both of them were my, my wife and wife and daughter were terrified you know they were like uh, my wife was telling the daughter you know my daughter like close your eyes don't open your eyes so both of them throughout that time it, it is a short time you know it's a short walk entrance to you know exit somewhere they kept their eyes closed <laughs> right and i'm 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 walking around and they had their eyes closed and both of them are holding on to my hand and uh, they are they're quite heavy and i you know because they had their eyes closed they didn't know where they were going and i had to literally drag them and uh, you know my daughter was also trying to uh, close her ears because you know some scary noises and oh and then we decided okay that's not once we came out said we're never ever doing that again you know uh, so you know things like that you you explore and you see that okay this doesn't work let's not do it uh, again and uh, but but that's a memorable moment uh, I'm, i we still talk about it we laugh about it after all those years maybe uh, i don't know maybe 10 years back uh, or maybe even you know more but we still laugh about that it was memorable but not really enjoyable so yeah so uh, you know you the thing is to plan now uh, uh, well some some of us have not been very good at this you know planning ahead and saying okay uh, um, on these dates or in on in this month right when uh, when well the schools close or uh, uh, you know you can it's a it's a lean month when you can take time off work whatever right so planning that and saying okay these three days or these four days or maybe if possible this within one week you know we will take off take time off and spend time together as a family maybe visit go someplace um you know to plan that in advance okay um so what i've noticed is that if you don't plan it doesn't happen right if you don't plan and set aside that time uh well even if we plan you know sometimes there could be contingencies you know there could be certain things that come up because of which we are not able to you know uh, do that but at least you planned ahead and you set aside some time and if not for those contingencies you would have gone ahead and you know uh, with that plan and you would have had a vacation or some time together so it's good to um, you know uh, think ahead look at the calendar maybe a year ahead uh, uh, maybe for you know 2023 maybe now is a good time to look at it and say okay uh, set aside that time right as a family uh for a vacation for some time together uh plan ahead otherwise um well certain things happen at very short notice there's a, maybe a you know a day off or you know something like that and you can take a day off and do things uh, but if it's extended time right it needs planning because you cannot if you're working in ministry you know you cannot just take time off randomly it needs to be planned because there are certain responsibilities certain things that you are meant to do and if you're not there you need to um, make some arrangement for that to be done because things have to continue right so if you're not there then uh, who can do that so all those kind of things you have to so that needs time um, that requires some adjustment at work or ministry so plan ahead okay and uh, be intentional about that so um these also these times also help bond together uh, uh help the family to bond together help the members of the family the husband and wife to bond together uh, well it's it's not uh, it's at these times there there could be some conflicts as well okay there could be some misunderstandings also you know um there could be certain difficult topics that come up also uh that need to be addressed so we will look at that you know we will look at contract resolution but um the thing is um you know to to actually plan ahead for these for these times plan ahead for these moments right okay so um 
Any questions? Let's pause for a bit. Um, any questions? I know it was a, kind of a practical thing that we looked at. Um, not much of chapter and verse, right? So any any practical, any things, anything that you might want to share also, like what worked for you uh, in your family, in your marriage, like some things like, you know, uh, what we decided, right? That, that I will clean and uh, I'll wash and put away things, something like that, what works for you, what worked for you, uh, or any questions. Or maybe in different cultures, maybe there are certain other things that you want to, maybe there are certain other challenges, maybe. Uh, you could, uh, you know, ask those questions also. Anything at all? <laughs> right, doing dishes is certainly helpful, yes. Um, yeah, doing dishes at a time when you know the uh, your spouse's energy level is low, and this it, it certainly you know helps. Uh, another thing is laundry, you know, and if you have a washing machine, you know, uh, putting clothes into the washing machine is definitely, I mean, the easiest thing to do. Uh, the other thing is to you know take it and if it doesn't have a drying function, you know, take it out, put it on the clothes line, drying it. Yeah, um, those kinds of things. You know, these are—I mean, these are simple everyday things, um, but seem very magnified and like you know, a, when two people are living together, right, husband and wife. Uh, yeah. Um, anything else? Okay, we'll take a break and then we'll. We'll come back, and if there are any questions, we can uh, address them, right? We'll take a break right now. Thank you. <laughs> 